Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Wednesday means it's Wild Card Wednesday here in Instant Deck Tech Land, and we have a super wild modern deck to check out today. This is Shape Anew, comes to us from Less Than Hubby, who took it to a 5-0 finish in a competitive league on Magic Online, so congrats to Less Than Hubby on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break down Shape Anew for modern if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made of videos take a minute click that like button subscribe button leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week so shape a new combo is kind of like this weird jess guy tempo-y kind of semi controly deck with a really unique twist thrown in and the unique twist is shape a new so shape a new is basically artifact polymorph four mana you sack an artifact, reveal cards from your library until you hit an artifact. That artifact goes on the battlefield. Everything else goes on the bottom of your library. So the plan of this deck is to control our shape anew by only playing one actual artifact in our deck. Then we have a bunch of ways to kind of make artifacts that aren't artifacts. So what are we trying to hit with our shape anew? And the answer here is the biggest, baddest artifact creature in the modern format, Blightsteel Colossus. So Blightsteel Colossus is a 11-11 trampling infector that's also indestructible. Normally it costs 12 mana, but we can play it for four mana thanks to Shape Anew. This is the only artifact in our entire deck. So our hope is that we Shape Anew into Blightsteel and then our opponent just dies to Blightsteel. Basically, out of all the cards in the modern format, our opponent needs Path to Exile is the only common answer that's really heavily played in the format. There's other weird stuff Stuff, like detention sphere but for the most part path is the only thing we have to worry about and then we just attack with blight steel maybe our opponent can chump a little bit to survive a turn but blight steel is usually just death to the opponent in maybe two attacks most three attacks if the board is somehow super full but if we really get this on turn four two attacks closes out the game with blight steel the rest of the deck we have a bunch of ways to make artifacts that aren't artifacts and some of them are pretty spicy so blade splicer good at gumming up the ground makes a 3-3 Golem comes down on curve. So we play this on turn three. Turn four, we can shape anew the Golem, get our Blight Steel. Thopter Engineer is the best of the entire bunch. So the sweet thing about Thopter Engineer is not only does it make a 1-1 Thopter, which is an artifact when it enters the battlefield, but it gives our artifact creatures haste, which means if we play Thopter Engineer on turn three, on turn four, we shape anew the Thopter, we get a hasty Blight Steel Colossus, which hopefully just wins the game all by itself. Just swings in immediately, kills our opponent. So that's kind of the biggest, baddest thing our deck can do. And then P and Karenilar, another good card at just kind of gumming up the board. We get two Thopters, we can sack them for damage, the Thopters have flying. So it's definitely possible that we can win without Shape Anew. We just play creatures that make multiple creatures and then win that way. Blink Moth Nexus is kind of our backup plan. It turns into an artifact when we make it a creature. So we can shape a new that way it's a little bit slower because we need a mana to activate it so we need at least five mana to go on the blink moth nexus plan so it's just a one of but it does give us another way that we can get an artifact for the shape a new plan our rest of our creatures, we have Restoration Angel, which works really good with our Blade Splicers, our Thopter Engineers, our P and Carandalars. We can blink them, make more tokens, gives us a big flying body to help attack. And then Snapcaster Mage also works well with Restoration Angel. We can blink it to cast another spell. Just lets us reuse all of our spells. So this is where our deck kind of feels like a weird, tokeny Jeskai Tempo type deck. And we can definitely just win by going Blade Splicer. Blink Blade Splicer with Restoration Angel, get another Golem, keep attacking with our stuff, and kind of win on that plan. As far as spells, we got Serum Visions to set things up on turn one. Gives us something to do on the first turn of the game. Gives us the ability to find our shape anew, to scry our Blight Steel Colossus to the bottom, because we never actually want to draw the Blight Steel, find our token producers. Then we have a bunch of burn type spells. So Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, and Electrolyze are great for when we're not on the Blight Steel Colossus plan. They can kill creatures in the early game 
game, but we can also just beat down with the Thopters, beat down with our Restos, Lightning Bolt, Snapcaster, Lightning Bolt, and win the game is a more typical, like, Jeskai mid-range style deck. And then, the Path to Exiles just give us an unconditional removal spell. Finally, a small number of counter spells. Spell Snare gives us a way to answer a Tarmogoyf on turn 2 when we're on the draw. Super important there. Mana Leak can kind of catch anything. Is it Charm is key because it can counter something, it can kill something, but it also lets us draw and discard. And the nightmare for our deck is we find our Shape Anew, we have an artifact, but we draw our Blightsteel naturally. With Is it Charm, we can loot away our Blightsteel. It has a trigger where it shuffles back into our library, and then we can Shape Anew to get our Blightsteel and hopefully win the game that way. So while in most decks you would probably just play more Mana Leaks, more Remands, more Lightning Helixes, in our deck the ability to loot away Blightsteel makes Is it Charm really important. The rest of the mana base, we talked about Blink Moth being an artifact. Celestial Colonnade gives us another good backup plan. This is one of the best control finishers in modern. Desolate Lighthouse gives us another way to discard our Blightsteel if we happen to draw it. Also just a way we can kind of churn through our deck and find our pieces. One Ghost Quarter for Tron, some Fetch Lands, a Sulfur Falls, and then a bunch of Shock Lands we can tutor up, along with some basic lands to play around Blood Moon. In the sideboard, we get a bunch more removal. Lightning Helix, great against aggro decks because it gains us a life, but also just kills something. Wear Tear for artifacts and enchantments. Supreme Verdict as a sweeper. Anger of Gods as another sweeper. And then we have Crumble the Dust for Tron. Dispel to force through our Shape Anew against Counter. Spell Skype for a bit of protection against Path to Exile. Then we have a bunch of other finishers. And one of the cool parts about this deck is we can decide that we don't want to be on the Shape Anew plan. If you look at our deck, Shape Anew is only taking up four slots. We have three Shape Anews. We have one Blight Steel. Some of our other cards, like Thopter Engineer, maybe aren't the best option for the three drop slot in kind of a controly Jeskai mid range deck, but they're fine. We can keep them in our deck. So we can actually just take out Blightsteel, take out Shape Anew, and bring in Karanos, Jace Architect of Thought, Worm Coil Engine, Batter Skull, and just play kind of a typical Jeskai mid range, slightly control ish style deck and win kind of in a more typical way, which is nice if our opponent has, let's say, Graph Digger's Cage is one of their big sideboard cards, or they have a way to uh, exile our Shape Anews with Surgical Extraction, then we can just get rid of that plan altogether and beat our opponent down with Worm Coils and Batter Skulls and draw cards with Karanos and stop Lingering Souls damage with Jace Architect and play like a Jeskai mid-range deck. And that is Shape Anew for Modern, and that's our instant deck tech for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.